Well, as I've been traveling around uh, Afghanistan for the last couple of years, um, I keep hearing about what they call arbaki, or militias, or pro-government armed groups, or Afghan local police. These are all categories that get kind of mixed up uh, with each other. There's a whole alphabet soup of different uh, pro-government militia units that have been raised and disbanded, or maybe not disbanded over the years. And there's so much confusion about whether they are harming or helping the situation in a lot of places. Uh, in a lot of places, um, security commanders tell me that some of their um, most difficult fights are not against the Taliban, but against themselves, essentially. It's, it, 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 these fights that happen amongst, uh, squabbles happening amongst the security forces. And, um, you know, I, I really think that we don't have a, a good plan at the moment. Right now, there's uh, what they call a uh, integration strategy. So uh, by 2018, uh, the Afghan local police will lose their funding from the U.S. Treasury, and the idea is to bring them into the main body of the of the Afghan police. Um, but taking a bunch of guys who don't wear uniforms and don't really answer to a, a chain of command uh, and trying to integrate them with uh, a national police uh, force based in Kabul is going to be very difficult. And we have some um, historical precedents for how this can get messy. There used to be something called the CIP, the Critical Infrastructure Police, up in the Northwest. And it existed very briefly. They hired all these guys with guns. And they told them, oops, go home, forget about it. And then, of course, they didn't go home. They became roving bands of, of militias. And uh, this is what we need to avoid. And uh, so dealing with uh, these uh, pro-government groups will be a key security challenge uh, in the years ahead.